Hello there. I'm Baya from Speak Peak English, and today I'm thrilled to spend some quality time with you as we embark on a delightful baking adventure. Join me in my kitchen, where we'll create the yummiest chocolate cake together. The best part? It's my own recipe, and you can choose to make it with or without eggs. How awesome is that? But before we dive into the baking fun, make sure to show your support by liking and subscribing to our channel. Now, let's get started by gathering all the ingredients we need. I might need your help in locating them since I'm more used to working on my mobile phone for Speak Peak English videos. First, let's check the cabinets for flour, sugar, cocoa powder, and baking soda, our dry ingredients. You know, the ones that are completely dry, like these essentials we just found. I hope my little explanation helps clear that up. Now off to the fridge for the egg. It's optional, so feel free to skip it if you prefer. Eggs are excellent for binding, but don't worry. Our cake will be delicious either way. Whether you choose to include the egg or not won't affect the taste or softness. Oh, look, here's the vanilla essence in the fridge door. That's another ingredient found. And lastly, we need oil, which I'm confident we can easily locate on the kitchen counter. I mean, it's my kitchen, so I should know where everything is, right? As for the secret ingredient, I'll reveal it later. Because, well, it's a secret. Now that we've got everything ready for our yummy cake, let's take a moment to explore some essential kitchen terms. It's like a little kitchen vocabulary lesson. First off, we talked about preparing the cake pan. This involves spraying some oil to prevent the cake from sticking and placing a butter paper to make sure it comes out smoothly. Though I admit, it's not my favorite part. It can be a bit dull, right? Then we turned on the oven to 200 degrees Celsius for preheating. Preheating means getting the oven all warmed up before putting our cake in. It helps the baking process work its magic. Now, let's talk about the tools we used. We needed a bowl to mix our ingredients, measuring cups and spoons to ensure we get the right amounts of each ingredient, and a spatula for stirring everything together. These are like the superheroes of the kitchen. They help us create amazing treats. In our ingredient list, we mentioned flour, which is a powdery substance made from grinding grains. Cocoa powder adds that rich chocolate flavor. Sugar sweetens things up. Baking soda helps our cake rise, and a pinch of salt enhances the overall taste. We also mentioned using oil. It could be vegetable or any cooking oil you have at home. Oil keeps our cake moist and adds a bit of richness. And don't forget the egg. It's optional, but it helps bind everything together. If you prefer a cake without egg, no worries. It'll still be delicious. We mixed one and a half cups of flour, half a cup of cocoa powder, one cup of sugar, three, four teaspoon of baking soda, and a pinch of salt. Sift all dry ingredients together and mixed them well. Create a well in the dry ingredients and add half a cup of oil, one cup of lukewarm water, and an optional egg. We mixed everything together with a spatula. No need for an electric beater. This makes the process simpler and more accessible, especially for those who might not have fancy kitchen gadgets. Now, the secret ingredient, white vinegar. It might sound surprising, but it reacts with the baking soda, making our cake soft and fluffy. And the best part, it doesn't leave any taste behind, so feel free to use it. Add two tablespoons of white vinegar and mix well. Finally, we poured our batter into the pan and placed it in the oven. We set the temperature to 180 degrees Celsius and left it to bake for 20-25 minutes. Remember, you can check if it's done by inserting a toothpick. If it comes out dry, we're good to go. After baking, we need to let the cake cool down for about 30 minutes. This ensures it sets properly. Now the most exciting part, enjoying our delicious cake. I can't wait, and I hope you're just as eager. Hey friends, now that we've baked and savored our delightful cake, 
Let's have a friendly chat about some more kitchen vocabulary. Picture us sitting around, enjoying bites of our delicious creation, and casually diving into more kitchen insights. So, while indulging in this scrumptious cake, let me throw some kitchen terms your way. Ever heard of whisking? It's like giving ingredients a good mix with a special tool called a whisk. Whisking makes things smooth and well combined. It's a bit like magic for your batter. Now, let's talk about sifting. Ever wondered why we sift flour? Well, it's to remove any lumps and add some air. It helps create a lighter texture in our baked goods. It's like giving your dry ingredients a little makeover before they join the party. And speaking of parties, have you ever heard the term fold in? No, not folding laundry. It's gently combining ingredients, usually something light, into a heavier mixture. This keeps the texture just right, like when we fold whipped cream into a cake batter. Oh, and let's not forget kneading. This term is often linked with bread making. Kneading is that rhythmic process of pressing, folding, and turning dough to develop its structure. It's like giving your dough a good workout to make it all elastic and perfect. Now, let's switch gears a bit. Have you ever encountered the term blanching? It's a quick cooking method where you briefly boil veggies and then plunge them into cold water. It helps retain their color and crispiness. It's like giving your veggies a spa day and then their saute. Sounds fancy, right? It's just a way of cooking where you toss your ingredients in a pan with a bit of oil over high heat. It's quick, it's simple, and it adds a burst of flavor to your dishes. Okay, one more. Marinate. This is when you let your food soak up all the flavors of a delicious marinade before cooking. It's like giving your ingredients a flavor bath. And trust me, the results are worth the wait. Let's wrap it up with a quick recap of the cake recipe and key English terms, and this time you should repeat after me. So, are you ready? Remember? Repetition is the key to mastering not just the recipe, but also the English terms we've explored together. Okay, repeat after me. So, grab your ingredients flour, cocoa powder, sugar, baking soda, a pinch of salt, oil, lukewarm water, an egg, optional, and the secret ingredient, white vinegar. First, prep your cake pan by spraying it with oil and lining it with butter paper. Then, preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius. Now, let's talk about our essential kitchen tools. A bowl, measuring cups, measuring spoons, and a spatula. We mixed one and a half cups of flour half a cup of cocoa powder, one cup of sugar, three-four teaspoon of baking soda, and a pinch of salt. Create a well in the dry ingredients and add half a cup of oil, one cup of lukewarm water, and an optional egg. Mix everything with a spatula. No need for an electric beater. Now, the secret ingredient. Add two tablespoons of white vinegar and mix well. Pour the batter into the prepared pan and place it in the preheated oven set to 180 degrees Celsius.
Bake for 20-25 minutes, then check with a toothpick. If it comes out dry, you're good to go. After baking, let the cake cool for about 30 minutes. And there you have it, your delicious homemade chocolate cake. Great! Here ends our English lesson. I hope you had a fantastic time baking and learning English with me. If you ever want to revisit this recipe or chat more about real-life English learning adventures, feel free to reach out. Until next time, happy baking and chatting. See you soon!